Hello, so today I wanted to talk to you about marketing. I got asked a question by, uh, by Let the Language Come. Let the Language Come asked me, do you have any video where you talk about marketing translation? And uh, so I wanted to address that here uh, because marketing translation is its own little beast. And in fact, to me, it's one of the most uh, difficult types of translations, probably after literary translation and poetry poetry translation is almost impossible but like literary translation like that marketing translation can be very difficult uh so let's get into it marketing translation what is it marketing translation is basically the translation of and you know advertisements commercials anything having to do with localization uh anytime you're trying to basically sell products in a, in a different country and you're translating whatever the text is, that's marketing translation. I mean, it can also just be websites of companies and pamphlets, brochures, stuff like that. Anything along those lines usually has to do with marketing. In fact, most websites, marketing is the main skill they want when they want their websites translated because that's what websites are there for. This can be an issue for many, many different reasons, uh, with localization, especially with localization. That's why you see very often when people need marketing translations, they specify that they want localization and they need someone who specializes in localization. Why is this? Well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, now you guys have, might have heard some of these horror stories or stories from uh, the news that you hear about various commercials that didn't translate at all. Uh, well, a famous one for English is um, there's a Swedish company called Electrolux and uh, they make a vacuum cleaner. And so they had a slogan that said, nothing sucks like Electrolux. That's great because it rhymes and they thought they were golden to have something, a vacuum cleaner advert that says nothing sucks like Electrolux for the States, but of course it doesn't work. And you have a lot of these that are lost in translation. A couple of the other famous ones are um, uh, Parker Pens. Uh, they, they, had, they had a slogan, which, wait, I have it written here, which was already bad. It was, it was, it won't leak in your pocket and embarrass you. I mean, I don't know, that to me is a bad slogan in any language, but when they tried to uh, have the same slogan in Spain, they uh, used embarazado, which means, it sounds like embarrassed, but it means to be pregnant. And so the slogan was, these pens won't leak in your pocket and impregnate you. Um, another one uh, that was famous was PowerGen. PowerGen is a company and it's an Italian company, or it's, at least they have an Italian base. And so the website for that was PowerGen Italia. And, but when you put it all together, it says Power Genitalia. And so that can be an issue as well. Uh, then there are other uh, examples that you hear. I mean, I, I could go on and on and, uh, you know, cause they're fun and you hear about them in the news because another one that's famous is VIX. Uh, many of you might know the company VIX. And when they went to Germany, however, they forgot that VIX, uh, the V is pronounced uh, F, like an F, and so it sounds a lot like a bad word in German. And, and yeah, anyway, I won't uh, bore you with all the other ones, but there are many examples of these mistranslations, and these are the famous ones. These are the ones that have to do with brand names and with slogans. However, just with the marketing text, there are a lot of issues that can happen, and you really need to pay attention when you're marketing, uh, when you're dealing with marketing text and translations. The main thing you have to deal with are idioms. Uh, these are metaphor similes, innuendos, uh, stuff like that, because these are very hard to translate. So whenever I deal with marketing translation, it's, uh, it's something that I always have to pay attention to. Basically, I go over the text with a fine tooth comb because a, a badly translated expression within the text is really going to stick out like a sore thumb. And to make matters worse, what you might try to do is try to just explain what the expression says in detail but then you'll never get to the point. It sounds like you're beating around the bush and you'll just make it so complicated that whoever's reading it can't wrap their head around it and they'll just lose interest. I don't know if you saw what I did just there. So in these past two sentences, I used, wait, uh, one, two, three, four, five different idioms. I said, go over with a fine tooth comb. We'll stick out like a sore thumb to make matters worse, which is also an idiom. Uh, and beating around the bush and then wrap their head around it. All of these are things that can't really be translated into most pretty much any language, literally. And you need to find an equivalent expression. And that's where a lot of marketing translation can trip up because it's hard to find these same expressions. And you need to understand, first of all, what it means. And you need to find an equivalent expression 
that means the same thing and can be used in the same context. Can't wrap their head around it. If, you, if your native tongue is not English, first of all, you might have an issue understanding it, like they can't wrap their head around it. Second of all, even if you understand it, then if you have to translate into another, into your native tongue, which is not English, how, what is the equivalent? You need to find the, the equivalent of that. Now, I'm sure there is an equivalent, but it's not necessarily all that obvious. And you can't literally just said they can't wrap their head around it because literally that doesn't mean anything. To wrap your head around something doesn't make sense. So these can be very, uh, th these can be big issues. Another issue that you come up with marketing translation is geographical issues. You know, these are obvious like in the States, if you talk about the Wild West, it means something. If you talk about the South, it means something. And everyone in the States understands this. But if you transpose it to a different country, it's very different. And you, you see this all the time in Italy. There's a big North-South divide that a lot of people understand. Also, there's certain issues people understand geographically, such as if someone has a certain accent, they're from a certain place. Um, which might be very hard to translate. Also, you know, like in Italy, if someone has a mandolin and pizza, it, it has something to do with Naples. Those are the stereotypical things of Naples. But it's very hard to transpose that to different countries. And uh, so a lot of these geographical issues can come into play as well. Then last but not least is the overall tone. If you have a commercial that says, buy from us now, we have great, we have dun, 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 dun. So you want to be able to convey that tone in different languages. And so you need to use the right expressions. But keep in mind, and a commercial like that is very, like you see it a lot in places like the States, but in other places, you might not want to use that type of language because it sounds too brazen or too in your face. And they use different types of commercials in different places. And so this can very much be an issue as well. Uh, once again, for Italy, um, you know, I know Italian and English best, but in Italy, uh, they have, uh, it's very imagistic. And you see this all the time, you hear it with songs and when people speak and all that, you try to create imagery with everything you do. And so you see a lot more of stuff being conveyed through this imagery rather than just through words or shouting at you, be like, buy now, if you buy now, you got that. Da, 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 da. And not to say you don't hear that, you do, but it's usually done very differently. So it's very hard sometimes to translate all of these and to convey the right meaning, the right expression, the right tone, and to be sure that it translates correctly and conveys the correct message. So that's why when you are dealing with marketing, it, it can be very tricky. So usually when I deal with marketing translations, the few that I do deal with, is um, what I do is I have to review the translation twice extra. So usually any translation I do, like I've mentioned before, I go through the translation, then I look at it again with new eyes, you know, in more of the target language and, and that mentality so I can make sure it flows. However, with marketing uh, translations, I need to look over it another time, just searching for idioms and expressions and these metaphors and similes and stuff like that. Make sure that I didn't translate something literally. Like to make matters worse might sound just like something people say, oh yeah, and to make matters worse, blah, blah, blah. But if you literally translate it into most languages, it really doesn't work. And so you need to find the equivalent. So yeah, this can be an issue. I, so I, I try to go over it once again, searching just for these expressions and make sure I translated them correctly. Then I do it once again, just looking at the tone, making sure that the right tone is conveyed and that it works in that language. And this is, um, yeah, you know, it can be complicated and some people are really good at this and some people it just kind of clicks and they understand right away what's being tried to convey it and how to convey it in the next language. And if you are one of those people, then by all means get into marketing, get into localization because people who are good at it are very rare. And if you are good at it, you will be able to do very well in translation uh, because you'll, you'll be in high demand. Once word starts getting out and once you do some good translations of this, then it can be very good. Remember you work for the client and so many times you're gonna have to explain it if you changed a certain expression or if you changed a certain tone or something like that. But if you know what you're doing and if you're good at it, you know, you can explain it and uh, they'll be happy with it. Another brief story uh, before I finish, there was, uh, so this is probably the first time I came across this and, and I, when I realized the skill that's needed to do stuff like this. When I was young, the movie Look Who's Talking came out with John Travolta and Kirstie Alley. And uh, the way it works in Italy is it gets dubbed so it doesn't come out until like a year later or six months later or something like that, depending on the movie. And so this movie had come out in the States, but not yet in Italy, but they were talking about it in the local paper. And the movie called Look Who's Talking, someone said, oh, there's a new movie. Uh, they're saying in Italian, obviously, and they say, 
and they're saying, and it's called Guarda Chi Parla. And I remember my mother was reading it and she's like, oh, the, you know, what garbage or what, you know, what do they do? I'm like, why? She's like, Guarda Chi Parla, that's not how you say it in Italian. It's Senti Chi Parla. I was like, oh yeah, that doesn't work when you say it in Italian, look who's talking literally. And I think it's the first time that it clicked for me. In fact, then when the movie came out, it was called Senti Chi Parla. But just this article that mentioned the movie before it came out, called it incorrectly and which made me notice it. Anyway, so I hope this helps you. If you are interested in marketing translations, then you do need to keep stuff like this in mind. And, uh, but it can be very lucrative. So, and it can be very attractive and can be fun too, because you're coming up with new advertisements uh, in your new target language. And so, and new ways of selling things, new ways of advertising things. So it can, you can have a bit of fun with it as well. So it really depends on your attitude and, uh, and yeah, if you think it's for you. So I hope you found this useful. And if you are interested in marketing translations, please do let me know and let me know how you would go about it or what you think about it. And that's about it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Savedum. Thank you.